Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. It brings me great joy to welcome you back to the channel, where we gather to share our faith and insights. Today, we have something truly extraordinary to share with you, something that has the potential to shake the very foundations of our understanding and preparedness for the future. Pope Francis will be presenting a shocking vision, one that he himself has received but a profound revelation gifted to us by a cherished brother in Christ. This powerful message is not just an isolated experience. It serves as a divine call to awareness and preparation for what lies ahead. So, let us dive right in together, with open hearts and minds. Recently, I experienced a deeply unsettling vision that revealed a series of events poised to unfold in the near future. As I reflect on this vision, I can't help but feel an overwhelming sense of urgency, as it appears that very few people recognize the true gravity of what is coming. What compelled me to share this vision with all of you were the recent reports of Japan being struck by a massive earthquake, a devastating reminder of how quickly our world can change. This catastrophic event left me with an aching heart, filled with a profound sense of fear and anxiety that continues to weigh heavily on my spirit. In sharing these emotions, I want you to understand that I am not alone in feeling this way. Many of us struggle to come to terms with the unpredictability of life and the disasters that can strike at any moment. I genuinely believe that no one can truly prepare for such catastrophic events in the physical sense, as the reality of their impact is often beyond our comprehension. However, what we can do is prepare ourselves spiritually, fostering a deep and abiding faith that can carry us through the darkest of times. As we delve deeper into the specifics of this extraordinary vision, I urge you all to keep your hearts open to the profound message that God is conveying to us through this experience. Together, as a community of faith, we can uncover a source of hope and strength that will guide us through the uncertainty and trials of the times that lie ahead. It all began on what appeared to be an ordinary night, a night like any other after a long, exhausting day filled with the typical stresses of work. I fell asleep almost immediately, succumbing to the heaviness of my fatigue. However, in an unexpected twist of fate, I found myself abruptly transported from the comfort of my cozy bed to an entirely different reality. Instead of the familiar surroundings of my home, I was standing in the heart of a bustling city in Southeast Asia, traversing vibrant regions that included the Philippines, Japan, Singapore, and China. The atmosphere was thick with humidity, clinging to my skin and making the air feel heavy and oppressive. The streets were overflowing with people, a vibrant tapestry of cultures and lives intertwined in the hustle and bustle of daily existence. Everything appeared to be just another day in this thriving metropolis. Yet beneath the surface, an eerie tension permeated the environment. There was a foreboding sensation, an unsettling awareness that something terrible was lurking just around the corner, waiting to unfold. Without any warning, the ground beneath me began to shake violently. At first, it felt like a minor tremor, a fleeting disturbance that momentarily caught my attention. But this sensation quickly escalated into something catastrophic, transforming into a massive earthquake that sent shockwaves through the very foundation of the city. Buildings that once stood tall and proud began to buckle and crumble around me, succumbing to the immense force of the seismic activity. The cacophony of destruction was overwhelming. The sound of terrified screams mingled with the crashing of structures and the blaring of alarms reverberated through the chaos, creating a symphony of fear. I struggled to regain my footing, desperately trying to navigate through the turmoil that surrounded me. Yet, despite my best efforts, it was futile. I lost my balance and fell to the ground, engulfed in the tumult and confusion. It felt as though the world itself was spinning out of control, and I was powerless to stop IT. In an instant, as if caught in a divine whirlwind, I was lifted up, hovering above the devastation like a silent observer. 
From this elevated perspective, I was able to take in the full scope of the catastrophe unfolding below dot dot. The entire city was being torn apart before my very eyes. Skyscrapers that once symbolized human ingenuity were now collapsing like fragile toys. Roads were fracturing open like wounds in the earth, and fires were igniting from ruptured gas lines, sending flames shooting into the night SKY. But the horror didn't end there. The earthquake triggered a chain reaction of catastrophic events that reverberated around the globe, creating a domino effect of destruction. I became acutely aware of other earthquakes erupting simultaneously in various regions, each one contributing to a growing sense of chaos and despair. It felt as though the entire planet was responding to this singular event, with tremors felt from sprawling metropolitan areas to quiet rural villages. The very earth beneath our feet seemed to be voicing its anguish, a stark reminder of our vulnerability in the face of nature's immense P.O.W.E.R. Then, the scene shifted, revealing the ocean. Enormous waves of tsunamis spawned by the seismic activity surged toward the land. Coastal cities were being engulfed by the relentless tide. I watched helplessly as people attempted to flee, only to be overtaken by the swift, merciless waves. Next, my vision shifted to underwater volcanoes that had long been dormant, but were now erupting with fierce intensity. The ocean broiled and boiled, while the sky became shrouded in darkness, filled with ash and smoke. It was as if the very earth had unleashed its fury, wreaking havoc in every conceivable manner. The vision transitioned yet again, and I witnessed the aftermath of the disaster. The world was unrecognizable, cities lay in ruins, and the landscape bore deep scars from the chaos. The few survivors I encountered struggled desperately to find clean water and food, their bodies weakened and VUL and ERABLE. A rapid spread of disease took advantage of the fragile condition of the remaining populace. I could see despair etched on the faces of those searching for shelter and loved ones, grappling with the loss of so many lives. The atmosphere was thick with hopelessness. There was little food available, and the mental toll was evident, with the eyes of the survivors reflecting profound sorrow and trauma from their EXPER, i.e. NCES. In a sudden jolt, I found myself back in my own bed, gasping for breath, my heart racing uncontrollably. It took me a moment to comprehend that it was merely a vision, not a reality. However, it felt so palpably real. I can still feel the tremors beneath me and hear the cries of those in agony. I am left questioning the meaning behind it all. Was it simply a nightmare, or was it something more significant? Perhaps a warning, a sense of urgency fills me, compelling me to share this vision with others. I am just an ordinary person, not a prophet, but this experience is something I cannot dismiss. I don't intend to instill fear, but I feel an overwhelming need to convey what I SAW. Perhaps, together, we can strategize on how to mitigate such a disaster. I fervently pray that it was merely a dream and that none of this will ever come to pass. However, if there exists even a slight chance that it is real, we must be prepared dot dot. As the vision progressed, I realized that the destruction was not confined to Southeast Asia. The tremendous earthquake seemed to initiate a chain reaction of disasters globally. I observed the Earth's crust shifting like liquid, with tectonic plates grinding together with such intensity that the entire planet trembled. My perspective shifted to various locations. In California, I witnessed the San Andreas Fault rupturing, unleashing powerful earthquakes that devastated cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. I saw the Golden Gate Bridge collapsing into the bay, tall buildings crumbling to the ground, in Japan, volcanic eruptions wreaked havoc, burying Tokyo under torrents of lava and ash. No matter where I looked, there was utter chaos. People were running in panic, but there was nowhere safe to escape. In Europe, I witnessed a series of devastating earthquakes that struck countries such as Italy, 
Greece and Turkey, causing ancient and historic buildings, some of which had stood for centuries, to crumble into dust. The iconic Eiffel Tower in Paris, a symbol of romance and culture, remained standing for only a brief moment before it to succumb to the relentless forces of nature, crashing down amidst the CHAOS. Following these catastrophic tremors, the scene shifted to tsunamis, monstrous waves that surged forth with overwhelming power, engulfing entire islands and coastal regions. Cities that once bustled with life were reduced to mere memories, swallowed by the relentless tide, leaving behind nothing but destruction and DESPAIR. As I continued to observe, the volcanic eruptions intensified. Underwater volcanoes, dormant for centuries, suddenly awakened with violent ferocity, belching forth molten lava and ash into the atmosphere. The ocean's surface boiled, killing countless marine creatures and sending plumes of smoke high into the sky. This ash, like a shroud, spread across the globe, obscuring the sun and ushering in a chilling volcanic winter. Crops withered under the ashen sky, leading to widespread hunger and desperation. The air became thick with particulate matter, making it difficult to breathe, and countless people succumbed to illnesses that were once manageable, as the absence of medical care transformed minor ailments into life-threatening C-O-N-D-I-T-I-O-N-S. Amidst this harrowing reality, I saw survivors huddled in makeshift shelters, their faces gaunt and drawn from the ravages of hunger. Disease spread like wildfire among the population, claiming lives with alarming speed. The atmosphere was heavy with despair, as many individuals became so overwhelmed by their circumstances that they surrendered to hopelessness. This pervasive depression was a testament to the psychological toll the disaster had taken on the human spirit. The vision also revealed the catastrophic economic collapse that followed in the wake of such devastation. With cities in ruins, global trade came to a grinding halt. The systems that once allowed for the movement of goods and communication crumbled, leaving communities isolated and VUL and ERABLE. Governments, overwhelmed by the sheer scale of the crisis, struggled to maintain order, leading to chaos in some regions where people fought over scarce resources. Despite the overwhelming suffering, glimpses of hope emerged as communities came together sharing whatever little they had left. Yet, the enormity of the suffering overshadowed these acts of kindness. As the vision drew to a close, I found myself gazing at Earth from space. The once vibrant planet, teeming with life, now appeared shrouded in darkness and emptiness. The bright lights of bustling cities were extinguished, replaced only by the faint glow of uncontrolled fires burning amidst the wreckage. At this moment, I recalled the words of the Bible, specifically in Isaiah 24, 17 to 20, which warns of impending disasters, terror, pits, and trap await the people of the earth. Whoever runs from the terror will fall into the pit, and whoever escapes the pit will be caught in the trap. For the earth's foundations will shake dot double quotes. To the people of the world, I implore you to prepare yourselves I have been shown a vision of what is to come, and without the intervention of God, survival will be an insurmountable challenge. As the day of reckoning approaches, a time will come when everyone will be scrambling for safety. Now is the critical moment to listen to these warnings and to take them seriously, rather than dismissing them with mockery or I-N-D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-C-E. The Lord has made it abundantly clear that significant destruction is on the horizon and countless lives will be lost as a result. Those in major urban centers may find themselves without a viable escape route as calamity will strike with little to no warning. The time to prepare is now, however, to many remain complacent, believing that life will continue as it always has. The Lord is calling us back to him revealing his anger, and when calamity strikes, 
many will regret not heeding the call to repentance. It is crucial to act before it is too late. In another part of my vision, I saw people and animals struggling to navigate a road in the Appalachian Mountains. Cows were bolting in panic and military vehicles barreled past, the soldiers inside fully armed and on high alert. Some of these vehicles were equipped with peculiar round devices that seemed out of place. They rushed by as if fleeing from an unseen threat, although I could not discern what it was. In a moment of desperation, I shouted for the military personnel to slow down, warning them of a sharp curve ahead, but my voice was lost in the chaos. They remained oblivious to the imminent danger, their urgency blinding them to the perils that lay in their PATH. From what the Lord has revealed to me, these are final warnings, and it is now the responsibility of each individual to take necessary precautions to safeguard their own lives. Countless lives are in jeopardy, particularly along the East Coast. Despite the numerous warnings issued, the reality of these events is approaching far sooner than most anticipate. Authorities may withhold information from the public until it is far too late to respond effectively. One night, the Lord bestowed upon me a vision that encompassed to alarming events, an all-consuming darkness and the earth itself trembling violently. These events did not transpire sequentially, but they are warnings that we have been receiving for an extended period. This message, along with the others preceding it, serves as a final warning. The shaking and the darkness are upon us. It feels as though the earth is on the brink of upheaval. We must repent, repent, and repent once more.